Hello. So the last video I made was about a 3D printed harmonic drive that I designed and printed. And this video is about testing of that harmonic drive. So to be completely honest, when I was testing this and trying to find where the failure points are, I was kind of underwhelmed. Before I put out the last video, I did some initial tests with the harmonic drives, um, running them with no load on them for an extended period of time. And I was pleasantly surprised because I ran it for like 12 plus hours and there was no signs of wear, no cracking, nothing like that. So I decided to just end the test, put out the video, and then I would make a separate video on the testing. However, for the test I'm going to show you in this video, I put a substantial amount of load on the harmonic drives, which caused them to fail a lot quicker. And this is kind of common sense, but they still underperform my expectations. Towards the end of the video, I'll talk about what I think the root cause of these failures was and how it can be potentially avoided in future iterations of the design. So whenever you're trying to create a meaningful and reproducible test, one of the most important things you can do is to create a test rig. For these tests, I used a geared motor which had an output shaft spinning at 100 RPM and it was powered by a variable power supply supplying 15 volts. The output hub of the harmonic drive was attached to a 3D printed 3 inch long arm. Hanging from the arm, acting as a weight, was a 2 liter bottle completely filled with water. This bottle weighed 2100 grams, or 4.63 pounds. So this means that at its maximum, the harmonic drive was applying 13.89 pound inches, or 1.57 newton meters of torque. So after I had the test rig totally set up, I just let it run to see what would happen. So to my surprise, after about an hour, the strain wave gear inside the harmonic drive actually broke. My initial thoughts at the time were that maybe the lubricant I was using inside the harmonic drive, which was WD-40 gel, maybe was deteriorating the plastic, or maybe that the strain wave gear design was just kind of fundamentally flawed. Either way, after I took the entire harmonic drive apart to inspect the damage, I found that a couple teeth had broken off. So what I decided to do was just redesign the inner strain wave gear and reinforce that area and print it and then test that to see if it worked any better. So since I knew I wanted to show all these tests in the video, I knew I was going to need to film a lot of time lapses. Unfortunately, the camera I have was made back when Nikon was like, nah, video will never catch on. We don't need to include any of those advanced time lapse features. So instead I just made this atrocity of a rig, which basically just has a servo that hit the shutter button of the camera every 20 seconds. So take that Nikon, check and mate. <laughs> just kidding, please hire me. Once the new design was printed for the strain wave gear, I could then reassemble the harmonic drive and begin testing again. For this test, with the new strain wave gear design implemented into the harmonic drive, I used the exact same amount of weight and the same arm on the output shaft of the harmonic drive. This time, the harmonic drive did not fail until three hours into the run. Although this runtime was less than I was hoping for, it does show that the initial issue was with the fundamental design of the strain wave gear and not some other factor. And as a quick test, I wanted to make sure that the gearbox doesn't have any weird issues with a high speed input. So I powered it using just a cordless drill, which has a top speed of about 1800 RPM. I also wanted to test how much torque I could put on the output hub of the gearbox before something went catastrophically wrong inside. After testing was over, I weighed the bucket and it weighed 37 pounds. This means that 111 pound inches of torque were being exerted on the output shaft of the gearbox. When this much torque was applied, the gearbox sounded and acted like it was starting to slip. To figure out what was causing the gearbox to slip, I took apart the entire gearbox and to my surprise, the strain wave gear actually was not damaged at all. However, one of the bearings inside the wave generator actually came loose from all the stress on it, so this was likely what was causing the slippage. By testing the gearbox with a hanging weight, the load on the output shaft was actually not constant. The load on the gearbox over time takes the shape of a sine wave, where the max and min load on the gearbox is when the output arm is perpendicular to the string. I noticed while conducting these tests that the gearbox would start making very unpleasant sounds and it just wasn't happy when it was trying to be back driven by the weight as it lowered. I figured that the continual switching of direction of the load may be contributing to the high failure rate of the strain wave gear. To fix this, I designed a test rig that applies a constant load to the gearbox by back driving another geared motor as a generator. 
To increase the amount of load on the gearbox, the leads of the driven motor were shorted to each other so that the generator would require the maximum amount of power to drive. So to cover my bases and make sure I was testing things accurately and only changing one variable at a time, I decided to test the previous revision of the strainwave gear as well as the new revision of the strainwave gear. The previous version ended up lasting for about three hours with this new test rig. With the new strainwave gear design put into the gearbox, the test lasted for about four hours until it ultimately failed. In all of these tests, the main failure point was right where the wave generator contacted the strain wave gear. This is somewhat to be expected since it is a part of the gearbox under the most stress. Additionally, the fact that these parts are 3D printed does not help their cause. The layer lines of 3D printed parts are huge weak points, and with the way a strain wave gear works, it will be putting all of its stress onto the bonding between layers. Additionally, the repeated strain of the gear is causing fatigue in the plastic and contributing to the failures. As of now, I have two ideas on how to further improve this design. First, the strain wave gear can be printed in a material that's more resistant to fatigue, like nylon. Secondly, a DLP printer could be used, which has a lot smaller layer thickness and might have better layer cohesion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope you liked the video. I learned a lot by doing this, and I, even though these tests kind of, you know, underperform my expectations, they still taught me a lot about how these harmonic drives works and the stresses that play inside of them. So it was a good educational experience for me. I still hope to use these harmonic drives or a different version of these harmonic drives in a future project of mine, um, but for now, I'm not sure what that's going to be. So if you guys have any ideas on that type of project or any other type of project you want to see, let me know, um, and I'll try to do them. Also, huge thanks to everyone that watched the uh, Flight Yoke video. It seemed like a lot of people really liked it, um, which is great, and you know I love sharing these projects with all of you guys. And, and the channel's grown a little bit since then, which is awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you uh, like what you see and you want to watch more of this type of stuff, subscribe. And, yeah, see you in the next one. Peace.